What up, what up? This is your boy Checo. Um, today we're presenting the podcast and a collaboration we do with Fatima uh, for the Acquired series. Again, Acquired means acquired information. And this one specifically, this series is specifically dedicated to the education, right? Uh, we're really passionate about going to school and educating, especially in an era or in a moment in, li- in, in time where everything's focused around business and being an entrepreneur. Not a lot of people are built to be entrepreneurs, right? And not a lot of people are meant to be going to school. So vice versa. In this case, though, we besides just bringing people who are entrepreneurs, we also want to bring in individuals who are in school or have graduated from school and can provide information for students. So this podcast was with Fatima. Fatima, she's an awesome, awesome student, awesome person. Her story pumped us up. She immigrated from El Salvador. And she came to the U.S. not knowing any English whatsoever at all. And she learned it. Dude, she's impeccable when she speaks English, dude. Like, it's impeccable. You wouldn't think she was from, like, El Salvador, right? Like, you wouldn't think that. Like, she doesn't have an accent. And so, and even if she did, man, I still think it's dope when people have accents. I think it's dope, you know? But anyways, she's going to UCLA, pumped us up. Like, she she talked about her journey um, and talked about how she got there. And hopefully this inspires you guys. And hopefully her story motivates other individuals who are in this very moment doubting themselves when it comes to education and their career paths when it comes to school, right? And so keep it up. Keep it up, guys. And uh, Fatima, thanks again for collaborating with us. Like I said, you really pumped us up. Uh, You really motivated us. And we want to collaborate more and more with you. Uh, Your vision is awesome. I think what you're trying to do with the community outreach is dope. And I hope that we're part of it, too. All right. Peace, y'all. So we were discussing, just tell me, okay, where are you from? Mm-hmm. All right. And, and, and talk to me about a little bit about your background. Okay. Yeah. Are we live? Yeah. We are live. Yeah. Sorry. We've been live. Huh? <laughs> um, okay. So I'm from El Salvador. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, I did come here when I was 15. Um, I started high school. I started as a sophomore. Didn't speak English. Um, so that was a pretty challenging time of my life. That was a time where I wanted to, it was between I wanted to be there and I didn't want to be here. Wait, you started as a sophomore in high school? Yeah. You came here as a sophomore in high school? Yeah. yeah. And I you was didn't a know sophomore. English. I didn't speak a English. A lick of English. Nothing. Nothing. Everything I thought I understood and that I knew was nothing compared to what I needed to be. How in the hell do you speak better English than some people that were born and raised here? Like, literally. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it has to do, I'm not going to lie to you, it has to do with the education. And um, as, I'm, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize, like, the privilege that I did have over there. Because had I not had the private educa- education that I had there, I wouldn't be where I'm at right, here, right now. Because I know a lot of other kids don't have those resources. Oh, so you went to a private school out there? I went to a private okay, school. Okay, yeah. My cousins did the same thing. Yeah. So that's why they were well-rounded with English when they came out yeah. here, too. And I, I have, like, a coworker also that's super, like, he came well-rounded with English. And his wife, mm-hmm. just he just married her and, like, brought her over last year. Yeah. And, like, she's perfect. She integrated perfectly. But yeah. because of the that, exactly. right? Yeah. And so, okay, so you're, you're in El Salvador. What part mm-hmm. of El Salvador? Um, I'm from the city, San Salvador. San Salvador, okay, mm-hmm. okay. And tell me about your childhood. My childhood was great. It was perfect. It was like I really enjoyed everything about my childhood. I wouldn't change it for anything. Like I said, I was I was very privileged to have the things that I did have. And it makes, it makes it the reason why I don't resent my parents not being able to help me out as I, when I lived here. Because they gave me everything they could when I lived there. Like, they gave me that foundation that I needed to to be successful here, I think. And and what's your first memory of, of being in El Salvador? My first memory? Oh, damn. Hmm. It would definitely be going to school with my friends. I went to, like, an all-girls school, Catholic, nuns, mm. the whole thing. So it was, like, a lot of discipline. Um, I think... Honestly, just being a child, just being like little class clown, like enjoying my time. Like I had no worries. Like that would, I'm definitely going to always like be grateful Do you grateful guys have your own that. house? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And t- tell me about it. Tell me about your, your block where you grew up. Talk to me about like, what do you remember? Do you remember the smells? Do you remember the, the air? Because that's what I do all the time when yeah. I go to Mexico and I come back. I still have the same scent, you know? Yeah. 
Well, I think it was like a um, for me, it was always I always remember Christmas time. Christmas time was where it would be like a little windy and that's the time that I always like remember because it was like such a special time it was like my, it was my birthday it was Christmas it was New Year so it was like a bunch of like happy days combined into one and so f for that reason I'm so extra about my birthday now because like growing up that was like my thing that was like my thing that my mom would be like what do you want to do this year like like what do you want me to buy like for your friends like what do you want to order out so that was like a really good That, those are like the best uh, memories. Like for me, it was like spending time with my friends and having like a bunch of cats. <laughs> and yeah, and I, what I really do miss is just like that warmth of people just because you go and you walk through the store at school and then you know the lady where that works there and you say hi to her. You say good morning to her every morning where like you don't really have those things here. I feel like that's what really that was the biggest adjustment for like how community works there versus how community works here. Isn't that very interesting, though? It's um, something that I really th I think about a lot is, like, um, I I go back to, like, because I've been going to Mexico. I've been to Guatemala once in my life, right? I think mm -hmm. I was nine years old. That's because my grandma took me. But I remember how it resembled a lot going to Mexico as, as, as well because yeah. they said good morning. They said, hey, how yeah. are you? Like, people cared yeah for for how your well-being and i was like dude what the heck like i don't even know you but they're polite to you right and i yeah. be, and i and then i now that i'm older i think about it too i'm like dude they might not be rich when wealth but a lot of them are rich in culture yeah you see what i'm saying and yes, a lot of a, a lot of manners difference. too like manners and Yeah. We're made seem like we're savages mm -hmm. coming from another country, right? And we're made seem like we're uncultured. The thing is that if we all had the same opportunities when it came to having resources combined with the cultural richness that we have in yeah. our parents' home countries, dude, we would be well off, especially, of course, without the corruption. But, yeah, I remember I, I still to this day say good morning or good afternoon or yes. how are you to individuals I don't even know when I go back. Yeah. And the thing is that you give respect to every single person. You're taught to give respect, to say good morning, to say good night, to say excuse me to every single person. It doesn't matter where they work or what they're doing, but you're taught that respect for everybody. And I think that's what's really cool about it, those customs. And, and so you went to school, so you went to that same school from I went to that school to from first grade to 10th grade. And I was graduating, we only have basically 10th and 11th grade as part of high school. So I had one more year to graduate where when I came here, I started as a sophomore, I had three more years to graduate. Yeah, yeah. So that was my first step yeah, back in education yeah. because I didn't know English. I had to be stuck in school for three more years and I, didn't, I had no idea what I was going to do. And then you're so. studying that difficult Spanish, right? That, that um, I think they study that in Latin America where it's, um, what's that? La, is no, it's the the span. I don't even remember. It's like where they teach you proper Spanish. Oh, um, uh, cast well, el castellano, castellano pero, pero it's, es la um, lengua española. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So then, imagine coming here, and then yeah. English is the type of language that yes, it has structure to it. But it's also very, very flexible yeah. as opposed to like Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I know like the big battle right now too is um, putting sexes into different like, like uh, for example, nouns, for example, like a chair, la silla, la, la silla. Yeah. And so like, but I mean, we can't defeat that, right? That's the rule of the language, right? Uh, but now trying to learn English and you're mm -hmm. like, dude, why come from this, this like structure of, yeah. of vocabulary where there's, there's structure to it, to like a language that cool may mean what yeah. cold, but at the same time, it mean awesome. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that must've been a difficult transition yeah. for you. It was definitely difficult, but don't get me wrong. If I'm so thankful to have known Spanish first than to know English because Spanish is so much more complex and it's been a basis for me to learn French now. So I didn't know English. I knew one language. I was so lost, and I'm on my third language now. <laughs> so that's a big accomplishment. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I think it was also just like that love for music that I had. And it was, I just mostly listened to like English music, like pop and everything that was probably trendy here was trendy over there. So that was probably what helped me a lot and like my accent and also just being confident and not 
not giving a crap if I had an accent or not. Because I did have a huge accent for like a year. And a lot of people would make fun of me and I hated that. But... I mean, I speak their languages now, yes. so <laughs> where are they at? Yeah, where are they at now? <laughs> no, I know. It's funny because my dad talks about the same thing. So yeah. my dad in Guatemala, um, remember he called the gringos Yankees? Mm-hmm. Because back, especially back in that day, they had military out there. Um, and uh, I think I think it was because of the communists that was because of the communist regimes that were trying mm-hmm. to take over, especially the guerrillas. Yeah. But my dad's a big 70s guy. This dude listens to disco. Yeah. He knows it by heart. And it's funny because I started meeting people from El Salvador, Honduras, right? Mm-hmm. Other parts of, of uh, Central America. And they love the 70s, especially my dad's generation. Yeah, my dad too. I'm like, what? And they know the song to the T. Yeah. And he knows like a variety of songs, right? Right, Danny? Like, he knows a variety of songs. And so like, um, but that helped them understand English, mm-hmm. right? That helped them understand English and understand the, the like how much how flexible the language is right yeah how flexible it is when it comes to words and like the double meaning of words Mm -hmm. so he'll laugh at a movie and then later on he studied a little bit of english became kind of fluent in it so he understands you can hold the conversation yeah but like see what you're telling me it kind of like pumps me up because it gives a different face to an immigrant right that comes to this country give them opportunity to do it and they'll do it they'll get it done but you give them the opportunity to right Mm -hmm. and so 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 you're over there you're going to the school what's your first memory of the school what's your first memory of going to school my first memory was my best friend my my best friend of what like 19 years now she was like the she just like talked to me and i was like this like shy kid and she was like oh do you know your address And your phone number. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know those things. And she was like, what? Like, I guess her mom had told her, I told her, like, you need to know these things. Like, this is the one thing you always need to know. And I was like, my parents didn't tell me that. Like, (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I was like so confused about what she was telling me. But that's my first memory of being at that school. And were you into, like, what were you into back then and now? Like, especially... uh, How's the uh, the vibe at that school? So you said it's an all girls school. Mm-hmm. Is there, is it middle class, high class, like rich class? What is it? Is it like people that get scholarships to go there too? Like how is that school? No, I think the education system it's quite different here and there. Um, it's more of like what if you have the money you go. If you don't have the money you don't go. It's not about like you don't really have the opportunity. I don't feel mm-hmm. like of getting mm-hmm. scholarships and stuff like that. Um, and they charge for school. They charge. So I, is... at the time, I think my parents were paying about $40 a month, which if you think about it, people are making $200 a month. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that was like a huge sacrifice mm-hmm. for my parents to make. Um, and so I think it's more like middle class. To me, this is what I've discovered now. When I would talk to people and I would tell them I went to a private school, I had a maid, like, but I was like, this is the norm. And then I talked to my parents and I was like, you know what? Maybe this is not the norm. (laughs) Maybe the norm is something that I just didn't experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe the norm, that was the norm for me because that was my only reality. Mm -hmm. But I think that, I think that the norm, it's very similar to the norm here as where like a lot of people don't have the resources Mm -hmm. and don't have Mm -hmm. like the money to like go to private school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's interesting because I, I, my mom and my dad too they both have really like rough upbringings mm-hmm. and she tells me she's like listen poor here is rich over there and i'm yeah. like what, what do you mean mom she's like we used to sleep in beds that were made out of um hilo, mm-hmm. like literally like that's what we slept on and i'm like that takes me back right and i'm like damn dude i have like the perspective changes right yeah and I'm like, and then, so I have cut, cut my cousins went to private school out there too. But it wasn't, it was a big sacrifice for my uncle, right? Yeah. Because they understood, hey, listen, if they go to a, a regular school, mm-hmm. they're not going to learn anything because yeah, the resources are not there. And it's trash. Right? It's really bad. It's super bad. Yeah. Because like, even though here it's bad, like in some areas, especially when we grew up, where I grew up. Yeah. It's not as bad as like in our parents' home countries yeah. because I look, I go, I look back at it and I'm like, dude, because I, I mean, I've been, re- I'm really in, like immersed in my mom's community out there, mm-hmm. like in her pueblo, and so I know where the schools at, but I know like some people really struggle to pay for their child to go to school. I'm like, you have to pay to go to school, dude. Yeah. 
Like and for the uniforms. It's not for and, and for the, the uniform and the books. And your cuadernos. And and I think they also give the teachers bonuses, which is I think it's awesome. But I'm like, damn, they don't even take care of that either. Like the government, right? Yeah. And then like, but then I think about it. Okay, cool. You know, perspective is key. Mm-hmm. And what more of a duty do I have to be better, right? Yeah. And so, but any, anyways, um, so you so you're in school. You're you're in well. You're you're studying. Did you know what you wanted to study? Like what you wanted to be your profession to be? Back then, mm-hmm. no, not at all. I think um, well, the thing is, I'm back home. Like I never picture myself moving here. Like growing up, I that was never in a thousand years like what I thought I that I'd be here. So growing up, it was more of a um. That was my only job, just to go to school. Literally, my parents were, like, paying for this, paying for that. My only job was to go to school, get good grades. Um, the plan was when I get out of school, my mom's going to give me a car. I'm just going to go and finish my career until I have an actual career, and then I get a job. Yeah. That was the plan the whole time. <laughs> and then I hit 15, I move here, and it's like we're completely poor, like super, super poor. Like, I've never experienced this obviously growing up like with so many things and privileges like i never experienced that and so now i'm poor i don't speak english i'm so behind in school like i don't even know if i'm gonna graduate on time because of credits um so i feel like that was just the whole time between i was in high school and then like a few years after high school i was so lost and like academically like i don't i didn't feel like um higher education was something that i was gonna pursue not because i didn't want to but because I didn't, I didn't feel like I had the resources to do that anymore. Here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why did you come? Uh, my parents lost their job. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. was just a matter of they're older. They're not going to find anything they're at not, that point. They're not. And there's, it's a, there's a lot of ageism in Latin mm-hmm. America, right? Yeah. And they'll, they'll pay less money to the younger person, right? Yeah. Uh, they yeah, rather pay less money to the younger person than the older person who mm-hmm. has experience, right? Yeah. And I see that a lot too. And mm-hmm. what they call palanca, which is like knowing somebody in the profession. Um, where my mom's from, the uh, my cousin works. Uh, I have family members who work at this um, ranch where it's at the balvacas, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, my cousin tells me, he's like, dude, outside, right there, you see them picking the the you're seeing picking the manure. Yeah, that's a doctor. He's like, that's a doctor, but he doesn't have anyone inside the hospital that can get him the job. See that dude over there? Yeah, he studied He studied law. He's, he studied to be a lawyer. Can't get a job for the government. Yeah. Why? Because they don't, doesn't have the palanca for it. Doesn't have someone inside. So you start mm-hmm. seeing the corruption there. And oh, yeah. that's what happened to my dad, right? My dad's being successful in Guatemala. He's doing all right. The economy kind of collapses, you know, a little bit in the 80s. Mm-hmm. My dad didn't want to come to the U.S. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we He came and visited. <laughs> he came and visited, right? And so, but he's like, you have the opportunity, take it. Yeah. And he did it. So talk to me about that experience. So your parents lose their job, right? And their first thought is what? We have to leave? I think so. I, I just remember my parents being in this kind of like mode of like panic and kind of like, we don't know what we're going to do. And I remember I was not questioning anything. I was just like, you tell me to go there and I'll go. Like, mm-hmm. wherever you ask me to move, I'll move. Like, I don't, I, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like all I remember. But, yeah, I think it was more of a, um, like, my mom had talked to, like, her sister here. And she was like, yeah, you guys, like, should come. And, like, you know, like, she was here and it was all, like, nice and everything. And then we come here and it was, like, it was nice for a couple years, a yeah, couple months, different. few months. But... The reality is, like, I feel like this country does something to people sometimes. I feel like there's, like, that there's people like you that, like, you say, I'm not going to let this happen to somebody else. Like, I'm going to make it better for somebody else. And then there's the people who feel like everybody else has to go through it. Mm -hmm. And she was Mm -hmm. one of those people, Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. I hope she's listening. (laughs) For sure, <laughs> and for sure, and and so like um, I have have a where we're from, we have a, a big Arab community, mm-hmm. uh, and I remember t- talking to one of the homies, um, things from Palestine. He was telling me, you know what we did? Like my uncle came here first, gathered money. I think it was like ten thousand dollars, and he called my dad, come over here. 
-hmm. here's ten thousand dollars start your business you you don't have to pay me back but you have to get ten thousand dollars and call joe call whatever call the other cousin and each one of them had to do the same thing for the other mm -hmm. so it's a cultural thing too right yeah. but it's also like you said it's um it's a it's like a mental state right yeah. where like okay they have to go through the same hurt that i went through mm -hmm. why why and i feel like in her heart it was because like i've been through this all this pain and i've been through all this and i feel like you forget you do spend so many years here without that connection to your like culture to your family that you become like this culture here where it's like everything's about me and what can i get and what can i do for myself and what can that person bring for me because i'm the only thing that matters because that's what surviving teaches you mm -hmm. that you're the only person yeah. that matters in the picture yeah where you it's not necessarily that way i f i think it's hard too because um I have a I, I have like this retrospect when I when I think about the indigenous communities uh, how um they were communal right between themselves they all had their own like um tribes right mm -hmm. and everything was community but a lot of the European mindset and which it's justly so it had to be that way because they're immigrating most of these individuals that immigrated here from Europe were poor. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Or endangered slave. I mean, endangered, um, indentured slaves, right? And so they immigrate here, so they had to have that type of mentality. So this country was built on that, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, because it's let's survive, right? Mm -hmm. And then you meet the people where they're, they're communal, right? So it's kind of like this clash of cultures, yeah. right? And so, yeah, man, I I listen to my some of my family members when they talk about their first years coming here, like and what they went through, yeah. and. Some people do take the other route. They're like, you know what? I went through this. I don't want you to go through this, right? Mm -hmm. So learn from me and let me help you and let me point you the right way. And other people are like, dude, I went through this. You have to go through it too. And it's yeah. and it sucks. But Or some just don't care, right? They're, it's all about me, 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 like you're saying. And so so you guys come over here. You have to get adapted to the new community. You have to get adapted mm -hmm. to a new way of life, which is always work, right? Yeah. Work, work, work. Every time I go back to the Pueblo, time... Dude, oh yeah a minute seems like an hour yeah right and you actually enjoy the time right mm -hmm. but here you yeah. gotta get to it so you guys get here you have to get to it what would your parents do um my parents at first they started i honestly don't think that they work for like a couple of months um we brought some money from home and honestly like the first months i felt like i was on vacation like i in my head i was like so naive and i was like no, like, I feel like they're going to tell me it's a joke and, like, we're going back. Like, I don't have to actually live here because we're going to Disneyland. We're going, like, I saw everything. Like, I toured the entire <laughs> California. And I was like, okay, it doesn't seem too bad. Like, I'm kind of chilling. And then once the money starts running out, then it's, like, my aunt's, like, more, a little bit more, like, aggressive. Like, what are you guys going to do? Yeah. Like, you know, What's like, time's running. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, okay, well, I have no idea. Like, I don't know how, like, things work. I think my parents were kind of, like, also... It was, like, a few years that my parents were just desperate. And and that affected a lot of our, um, like, family relation, relationship. Where, like, um, there was just so much stress built up, I think, between all of us. That, that, that created a lot more trauma than I probably had my entire childhood. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. It sucks when you have to go through that. Uh, yeah. it's, I don't even know. There should be a name for that. Like, for that exact moment of, like, the psychosis changes, right? Mm -hmm. the, the psychology changes. And so so you're here. Your parents, your parents. I'm assuming, get jobs, like any type of job that can yeah. come their way, right? Yeah. Just to survive. And, mm -hmm. and uh, they start guiding themselves through life, I'm assuming. Like, they, they, okay, let's get an apartment or let's go find our own spot. It took spot, us or... a long time. Mm -hmm. It took us years. It really? took us probably two years to get out of my aunt's house and kind of, like, do our thing. But it was always, like, we would rent a room for all four of us. Like, mm -hmm. my sister, my parents, and I. Mm -hmm. it, it was never, like, we had a house or, like, we rented an apartment. And, like, it's always been very confined spaces. And that's kind of, like, what led me to to want to study psychology be, and like on a community level because I'm like the environment is doing something to an individual like for sure a hundred percent if you put an individual in like a split in a space where they can't move they can't they don't have a window they don't have like enough space to like do something 
you're not going to get the best out of that person. And if you get the best out of that person, then you need to find out what's motivating this person to do that, to, like, do something outside of what they know or, like, outside of what the environment is telling them to do. Yeah, man, that's interesting because that's what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. right? That, that's, that's, that's something we're trying to really do is find the purpose of the individuals who've made it out and and what was the key for them to making it out right mm -hmm. what information did they have too yeah right i believe that we're spiritual beings of energy right and 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 especially when you're in those situations there mm -hmm. that's like bad energy it's yeah. like bad and it clouds your mind right and it clouds the other people's mind too who's who's living through it as well mm -hmm. and that's something that i I want to be able to help individuals like, okay, dude, let's, let's look at the moment. Let's analyze it. Let's see what's going on and how do we, let's find answers. Let's not feel pity, but let's find yeah. answers. Cause your parents found, found answers, yeah. right? You found answers. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. And so individuals like you, what did you do? Right. How can we take your example and bring it here back to the communities and teach them? I know you're going through this stuff. But look, there's a way out of this, mm -hmm. right? And so, your parents are here. You, you go, you go to high school, right? So you, yeah. they they take you to high. Um, you go directly to us as a sophomore, and yeah. you're like, dude, did I sophomore. study? I studied this already, or was it like because yeah. of the English barrier? It was like, oh, dude. That, that's what was like different about it, and that's what was kind of in a way easy about it. I was just relearning everything I had learned in like seventh grade in a different language. Mm -hmm. As far as math, it's a universal language. So it was like, I'm, I'm fine. And I think for me, it came from having the right mentors. Like I had my professor, my teacher in high school, uh, Mr. Moreno, that was like, when my dad couldn't be a dad to us because he was like so immersed in his own like stressors, he was serious like my father figure. Like he would pick us up to take us to school. We're like, I don't know, like a lot of kids have that where yeah. they could find a mentor that can say, I believe in you. And I, I know that like you are going to be somebody that you're going to have something someday. Like, I think that's so important because I feel like he's the reason why I learned English, because he he was my ESL teacher and he would take us like we were like in first grade, teach us how to make sentences in English. And I think that was great of him. He was super patient. Um, I feel like the school didn't give him enough of what he needed. He didn't have the resources that he needed to push the kids. Um, we also had racist teachers that were like, well, you don't speak English, get out. And that does something to you as an as a kid. Belittles you. Yeah. Yeah. And either you either get out of that and you say, like, nobody's ever going to do that to me again, or you just, you're just stuck in that place and the whole world's going to step over you from that point because that happened to you. But it's not your fault. Yeah, touch that. Touch on that a little bit more. Touch, touch on the, on the, on the traits that your teacher had, of why he propelled you to learn English because that's important, right? You said he dedicated time. Yeah. And he had patience, right? Yeah. And he had the love for for teaching. Yeah. Right. Saw potential in you. That's something that I feel like if where I grew up, it was a lot of gangs, right? Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to be a gangbanger if I wanted to. Uh, statistics always said that a brown male growing up in Southeast LA was either going to be in prison or dead by the age of 18, right? Especially when I was growing up. And um, But something I really do wish I had more of when I was younger and something that we kept as first generation children of immigrants here was the same hunger immigrants have when they come here. Yeah. Because I feel like we lose it mm -hmm. because we become part of the established community. Even yeah. though we're still going through the struggles, we somehow see ourselves like, or some, not all, right? And um, But the hunger that your parents have, right? Mm -hmm. Or the hunger that you had because you're the first generation. You're the first immigrant. Yeah. You're the first one of your your generation. If you're going to have children one day or if not, I don't know. But you you are that immigrant parent. Yeah. So you have that hunger. And like, I'm like, dude, I want to have that same hunger, you know, mm -hmm. the same hunger that made our parents. Okay, we have to fight for this now. Yeah. Right. And so 
you learn English there, right? Um, and then you're going to high school. You finally learn English. Yeah. And do you fall in love with studying again do, or with going to school? Or do you just, like, go through the motions? I feel like for me, high school was just going through the motions. In high school, I could tell you what. I had, like, a 2.3 GPA. Like, I had no idea what a UC was, what a Cal State was, like, what a college application was. I was like, why do you have to apply to college? Like, I thought you'd just, like, go and pay for it if you can't, if you have the money. Um, but I had no idea. I seriously had no idea how any of those things worked or how, what I was supposed to do. Um, and then I feel like once I hit my senior year, it was just more of like, well, for sure, I'm not going to college. Like, I'm not going to be able to afford it. Um, I think once I was out of high school, there was like, I had love for school. I wanted to be in school so bad. And I was very sad because I couldn't pay for school. Like, I couldn't afford school. Um, and then like all my coworkers would be like complaining about homework. And I was like, I want to, I would be so excited to have homework. Like I'd be so excited to be like, be learning, but I don't have that opportunity. Um, so that like kind of forced me to just work for like the next three years. Um, and then that's when I kind of like found my way back to college. And I said, you know what? I saved enough money. And I said, even if it takes me 10 years in community college and I have to pay $10,000, to get through school, I'm gonna do it because that's what I wanna do. And so my first semester, I had like one psychology class and I remember I paid $600 to have this class, like this one class. And I was like, this is crazy, but I'm gonna have to do it. Like, I'm, mean, it's gonna take me like a class a semester, but like, it's gonna have to get done because that's what I need to do. And I'm tired of being poor. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. Um, and then I kind of started figuring it out a little bit more, um, started getting A's in classes, started getting the opportunity to join more programs. And then that's when, like, I applied to, like, this one program, like, UOPS at Chafee. Um, and then they basically paid for all my stuff. They refunded everything I had already paid for. They paid for that. They paid for They started paying for my books. They started giving me, like, gas money, food money. And I was like, oh, like, like I'm like, why do people complain about college? Like, this is so much fun. Like, I'm always getting fed here. Like, I'm never hungry here. Like, there's always, like, a workshop. And then they always get me because they're, like, free food. And I'm like, okay, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> but that's the thing. you got to go out to these things. And I feel like that's that's a lot of, that's one of the things that I see a lot of kids not doing. And that is looking for resources and, like, not being afraid to go out there and like ask and say i need that i need that one thing because our kids don't still are not getting those opportunities and yeah, how do you do that i think it's like losing like that stigma or shame that like oh they're gonna think like i'm poor they're gonna think like i need something or like they're gonna feel bad for me like, at that point i feel like it's either like well like it okay they feel bad for you and then what like i are you dead? Are you still alive? Like, does your life still continue? You like, still yeah, need it, it does. Yeah. You're still you're, you're still your own person. Like, your life is still going, and now you have the help. If a person felt bad for you or not, like that is that has to do with that person has nothing to do with you and your hustle. So, so you start getting this help in in, in Chafee, right? Mm -hmm. And um, does that just boost like your enthusiasm for school? Does that just yeah. like you're like, damn, you know, yeah. now I'm gonna go 100. If I was already going 100, yeah. paying out of my pocket, now I'm going to go 10 yeah, times that. I think that second semester, I was still kind of lost and, like, not knowing what I wanted to do. But once, and, and again, for me, it goes back to being that mentor that guides people. And I just wish for every single person to connect with somebody who can push them to be better. Because um, then I found my counselor on that program that I had to meet. And I feel like I sat with her, and she gave me everything I needed to do in like a platter and like I was just like she would just like drew my entire like community college career and she was like this and this and this is what you're gonna do and then you'll get there and I was like okay well I'll do that <laughs> and then she was I didn't even know about UCLA like I had no idea what UCLA was and then she was like you have really good grades like why didn't you apply to UCLA and I was like what's that <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> how like, dare you? Like, what's, what's so cool about that? Like, yeah. Um, and then that was the moment that it was in my head. I'm going to go to UCLA. Like, I'm going to go to UCLA. And that's where that started. And that's where I like, I really started to say, okay, I'm going to do honors. I'm going to do this because I could do it. And I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But see, that's the important part, right? Yeah. Is um mapping out 
your school career, right? Yeah. It's mapping it out, which that... You need to have a plan. Dude, I didn't have it. You need to have a plan. It took me three years Mm -hmm. to get out of community college. Um, And it comes back to that, having that person that can guide you through it. Like, you're not meant to figure it out on your own because that's not your job. You you don't have the skills to do that. And it's also a business, right? So their business is like, dude, I'm collecting fast money from this kid. Let's keep him here as long as possible too, right? Yeah. It's a twofold, right? It's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Um. I didn't get it till like an older student told me, like, dude, why didn't you go get a roadmap? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about a roadmap, dude? You, it's easy. Go to meet the counselor, tell them what you want to uh, study. And they're gonna give you a plan of what classes to take. Yeah. Just focus on that. I was like, dude, what are like, you talking? What? <laughs> Wait, what? It's like, yeah, it's cheat code, dude. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, like, exactly. Taking art class that mm-hmm. doesn't even belong to your GEs, right? Yeah. So like. At the end, when you transfer out, you transfer out with like 300 extra credits that the university can't accept because they're not yeah. part of your GEs or transferable courses, right? So, exactly. and so like, so that's important, right? So you had yeah. mentorship there, mm-hmm. right? You had the roadmap. You already have goals, right, to meet, yeah. and like you start looking for now resources for those goals, right, yeah. to meet those goals, mm-hmm. right? And you start working hard towards it, right? Yeah. You start working. Now, talk talk to me about your study habits. What did you do? What did you do to get better at school throughout your years, right? In school, what did you learn at Chafee that that that's helping you here at UCLA? Um, I definitely feel like Chafee was like um, even a little bit more challenging than UCLA just because of what I was doing. Like I was working full time, I was going to school full time, I was involved in like my club, um, and I still wanted to make sure that I was part of all of these other activities like that I wanted to be a part of and the workshops because they had free food and so um as far as studying habits I think in college my priority was balance like I needed to make sure that I was studying that I was that I had to go to work but I had to make sure to see my friends like during the weekends like late at night even if I went out with them like at two in the morning I needed to make sure that I was keeping social because that's for me, my personality, I, I tend to need that, like, social aspect. And I think it comes from, like, my culture, too. Like, I just need people to function. So I make sure I made sure that I had people, that I was always surrounded by people. And I feel like that's what kept me, like, kind of sane and, like, wanting to keep doing what I was doing. Um, I was very disciplined as far as, like, because doing the honors program at my school, like I had to do like all these extra stuff that you don't necessarily have to do if you're just taking regular classes. Um, But the goal was UCLA. And like, I feel like that was just what kept me disciplined. And and then, okay, so your counselor mentions UCLA. Mm -hmm. And then you're in your head, you're like, okay, what's so special about it? But then you're like, what made you actually want to come here though? Um, I think in that moment, I started talking to people who had done psychology, like they had done their bachelor's here. And then I was like, that sounds so cool. And I I think that's just my type of like learning. Like I take everything from mentors. I hear a person said, I do, I did this. And I'm like, I want to do that. (laughs) Like, I want to try that. Like, that sounds like what I want to do. So I just started hearing, um, hearing from people. And I feel like at that moment, just everything pointed at UCLA. I had no idea why this school was so good. Like, I had no idea, like, what was so special about it. Like, I didn't know what was the difference between here or Cal State San Bernardino. Um, But I was like, I feel like that's where greatness, like, is pointing me to. And so that's, like, the direction that I'm going to decide to go to. It's a fantastic campus. And so I was like, if I, I I said, like, I'm going to go all the way high. Because I feel like that was all the way high for me then. So I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go for any, anything under that. So I did. And you're here. And I'm here. And you're here. <laughs> and so what are your goals now? So you're here. You're starting to be a psychologist, mm-hmm. right? And talk to me a lot about your se- your uh, minor. Talk to me about that. So my minor came from that. Or from, are you double majoring? I'm a, I'm a psych major, and then I have a minor in education, and then a minor in community engagement and social change. Not declare yet, but we always speak it into existence. Yeah, so it's coming. No, and I'm actually working on it, <laughs> so like it's not like it's not going to happen. But... Um, community engagement, social change came for me because of like the community work that I have already done in community college and working with the community. I know that we need it. 
Um, and then because I understand that process of like, the per this person doesn't act in a certain way because of their own, because there's something wrong with them. The environment that this person is in has a lot to do with like the way that that person's behaving. So I want to always make sure that I have those two connectors, psychology and community, because that's just like the way that it makes sense in my head. So that's why I went for that. Um, now, I added education because I think it starts at that level of education. What we're teaching our kids is what's going to make them or break them. So I think it's important to it's important to look at what what's the pattern, because there, there's a lot of gatekeeping. There's a lot of like what kids are going to make it through this gate and what kids are not going to make it through this gate because we have to keep some kids back. But who are the kids that are staying back? So I think it's important to look at like those type of patterns. Um, and I definitely want to work with the community. I want to work with like nonprofit. Um, I want to do counseling for immigrant families um, just because I feel like my parents never are never going to have the opportunity to have therapy. And I want to give that to somebody else. Like if, if, if they sacrifice not having that, I think that it's important. I feel like there's so much trauma that goes in like being an immigrant. And especially if you like cross the border, I feel like there's so much trauma that you go through that you just seriously like, you just go on with your life like you didn't see all this crazy stuff happen. And I think that's so not healthy for anybody. Like that has to have some sort of like lessening of your quality of life and the the length of your life I feel like so that's what I want to focus on um but for sure for me like plans are grad school um here grad school is kind of right now for me what UCLA was back in community college like I'm I don't know much about grad school but I'm gonna figure it out yeah um I'm not sure yet where um, where I want to go for grad school, I think you can only keep going higher. Like you only shoot for higher, like you can't go any lower. Exactly. After, after exactly. Um, I'm thinking of like a PsyD, which is like kind of like a doctorate, but like in psychology. So that might be another thing. But I also have to always keep in mind, like, where's the money going to come from to pay for that? Yeah, it's always that's always a tough part, right? That's it's like, like financing you can, the you journey. You can plan everything, but it's like, what's going to finance that? Financing the journey. You? And, yeah. and I'm taking we're we're taking that as a as our main mission too mm -hmm. is um man we gotta be a bridge yeah we gotta be a bridge between people who wanna donate money mm -hmm. but don't know where to donate it to because there's a lot of wealthy people out there that wanna donate money but most of these corporations because I call them corporations now these nonprofits become corporations yeah. and they don't they don't distribute it well right. So I want to become that bridge to students like you yeah, who have a mission planned already. Mm -hmm. They know what they want. They know where they want to go. They just need that push, yeah. which is let me be able to eat. I'm not going to be in caviar and steak every night. Yeah. You know, let me let me let, have a little room. Mm -hmm. I can take advantage of the library. It doesn't matter until they kick me out. But just give me that. And I'll take care of the rest. Yeah. Right. And those are the basic needs that a student needs yeah. right now, especially people yeah. like you with a mission. Right. It's like, just give me the food. Give me the place to eat and like sleep for a few hours. And let me just keep working at this. Right. Hatching, yeah. ba hatching it out, hatching it out, hatching it out. Mm -hmm. to you. It scopes into something. Right. A career. Yeah. I think that career that you're, you're, that you're chasing is very beneficial to our community more than yeah. anything. Because we need that. Mm -hmm. Because our community doesn't have the the um the resources like you said for trauma right yeah or the benefits for it right like we don't have a place we can go run to mm -hmm. or like meet with or it's just not part of our culture right yeah exactly uh, or you keep it in between the family and you don't tell anybody yeah exactly you don't tell especially mm -hmm. a stranger forget it you know yeah what the heck does that stranger know about our family or what do they know about yeah. where we come from right and um they don't like self-analyzation, right? Where they yeah. analyze themselves or it's hard, dude. It's hard in yeah. our community to do that. That's why I want to break that norm of like, let's let's get talking. Like, let's get to, because I feel like people think of trauma. Like, you, you have to go to war and like, yeah. for you to have PTSD. Like, you really don't. Like, you can go through like a very, like traumatic experience in your life. And that will change the entire path that you take in life. And that could be either positive or negative. 
but you still I, I believe you should still be working on on those issues and like figuring everything out that's going on with you and what you touched on too was the immigration part of it mm -hmm. um, my dad came via airplane mm -hmm. my mom crossed the border two different ways right yeah but we're talking about like the 80s dude like my mom's been here since 80 literally and um she was 18 when she came my mom so she's been here more than half of her life already right she's well acclimated here my dad came in 84 he was like 21 i think at the time um sorry dad if i got it wrong too <laughs> but um the trauma that they're living through now yeah like i've seen videos dude like i'm like wow dude like what's going on in the cartel wars and now i think about the people having to cross that right so mm -hmm. One of our friends just went back to Mexico. She she was here. She got her child through college in Mexico. Her her child got in a real good degree and, like, one of the best degrees in Mexico right now. So she did her mission. She, she finished it, and she went back. But the way she told me she crossed over here was, like, yeah, it was back in 08. Yeah. And I'm like, dude. See, and we have different, like, we, we kind of go through the same struggle here. We're going through, like, we, we all, like, are having the same struggles here. But I feel like we don't go through the same experience getting here or coming here, which I think I think it's what makes me want to study that. And because to me, it, it sounds and it looks extremely traumatic. I can't even look at movies of people crossing the border because to me, that's just like insane. Like that is something that breaks your spirit as a person. And and you have to come here. And the next week you're already working, like you, you're already getting a job or something. So I think like that's just like super wild. I think she wants to. I think they might have like. This oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna end it here. Yeah. Thanks, Fatima, for meeting with us, and um, wish you the best in your Thank endeavors you. in the future. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we're out.